And there we go. We are um, gathering here. Carrie, would you like to say something as an introduction of intention for this? Well, I am just so grateful to you. Um, I know that we've had this intention of opening up your services, for lack of a better word, to our community and parents before this all started. And it was kind of one of the things that we kept like, oh, we got to connect on this, right? So coronavirus has made us connect on this. But I just want to say I'm grateful to the faculty and the parents that are here for it. And um, very grateful to you to offering this. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say because I know I'm going to eat it all up. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much. I think that there is, um, so people have started muting themselves and I think it's a good idea for, mm -hmm. just for sound quality that we do a little muting of our mics and um, things are a little sort of bathroom canny here in my office. So I um, apologize for any kind of um, sound that's not perfect, but here we are as perfect, imperfect people. And we're gonna dive into mindfulness-based stress reduction today. And I wanted you to walk away today a little more equipped on the inside to deal with some of the stressors that, that come up. And um, what I'll do a little now and then is that I will um, if someone happens to unmute themselves, I might go in and, and mute. Um, so you know what I'm doing. All right, so let's dive into this. I'm actually going to be sharing my screen so that you can follow along with a little presentation that I have of mindfulness-based stress reduction. So let me find that and uh, you let me know if this is now visible for you. Can you guys see the screen? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Can someone come on and say if they see the screen? Oh, you are seeing this. Yep, yeah, we can see it. it. We can see it. Okay, awesome. I'm very, very grateful for that. And um, yeah, we're gonna go through mindfulness. That when we talk about mindfulness, we actually refer most of the time to mindfulness-based stress reduction. And that is an area of expertise for me. And we're also gonna be talking about mind training. These are frustrating times. And I want us all to have as many tools as possible available to really find that calm within, to find that place within where there, there is no frustration. There is that part, there is that stillness. And um, we're gonna find that together today. And um, let me actually share just very, very briefly, the system of mindfulness intelligence that I have been developing for corporations in the last few years. And I will not quiz you on this. I just want you to be aware of that there is a, there is a technology, there, is a, there are techniques and methods, and we are borrowing not only from mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is an excellent tool, and it actually goes through all of these four legs that mindfulness intelligence are stand is standing on. It's stress resilience, it's attention control, it's mind management, and it's changeability. And I think we've been pretty tested on all of these four in the last few weeks in particular. But of course, this is nothing new to our systems to have to deal with stress, to deal with focus, to deal with the management of our own minds, and to deal with constantly being in change. So mindfulness-based stress reduction that we're going to go through today is the kind of awareness that will help you on all of these fronts. And I was speaking to a few teachers beforehand who were interested in knowing more about the system. So I thought, let me just include this slide. 
because what's very interesting here, which I'm sure a lot of science teachers would, would uh, agree with, is that we cannot do this and not include science. So there's a lot of quantum mechanics that go into this, and there's a lot of metaphysics. So with that, um, I can also mention that I'm, in, I'm an interfaith, interspiritual minister which means that when I approach this from a very scientific point of view, I also have another hand that where we hold this mystery of life, where we hold the sacredness of life, the holiness of life, that deep meaning that draws us further and further into love. And so it's always with these two hands and we, we're holding on lightly because the way that things work right now in the world and when we start thinking about what we really want and what we are missing and when we are just living our lives and even if i ask such a simple questions to, to question to audiences such as what do you really want in your life you know what most people walk around with is a mind that looks like this it is just just a myriad of different roads going different ways and you don't really know where you're going and one thing is really blocking the other and it's like having a, a train going the one way and then you install an engine that makes it go the other way and then we're wondering why we're exhausted this is why we're exhausted and what we can do today together is um someone is drawing on the screen which i think is really really kind of fun i don't know who does that but i think this is is actually making it a lot better because this is so true do you guys also see the yellow and and red lines going across it's actually not part of the presentation but it's like perfect this is the chaos that goes on in our minds so together today with these simple but extremely potent methods from mindfulness-based stress reduction, I am hoping that you can choose a road that looks a lot less um, messy. Now, I have no idea where this, um, <laughs> where this, uh, red um, stuff is coming from, but I'm realizing now that it's going to be part of every single slide. So let me just very quickly stop the sharing and then I'm going to go in and um, if someone has the ability to draw on the slides, maybe we can wait with that until the last slide. Um, and that way I can um, make more sense for everybody as we give this a new try because when we look at these kinds of images where i want you to have a, a road within you that is calm that's inspiring a pathway within yourself that is not chaotic and wherever you lean in terms of, oh, I want it to be a lot of nature, I want it to be super modern, it's your road. It's your simple road. You may not see exactly where you're going, but you are going to enjoy the ride. And that, was, that is what takes us to mindfulness intelligence, mindfulness-based stress reduction. See, I work so much with mindfulness intelligence, so I, <laughs> I keep on saying that. So let's just do a little basic stuff around before we dive into the fun stuff, which is to actually try it. Um, Mindfulness-based stress reduction has four formal meditations. They are exactly what the screen is telling us, which is that we have breathing meditation, we have a body scan, we have walking meditation, and we have mindful movement, also called mindfulness yoga in some instances. Now, what's different from mindfulness-based stress reduction to other types of meditations? I have, for instance, been doing transcendental meditation every day for the last 24 years. 
And that is a mantra based meditation. So I repeat a mantra to myself. We don't do that in mindfulness. Another thing that we don't do is that we're not being so picky on the actual time. In transcendental meditation, again, as an example, we do 20 minutes and that's it. Not 19, not 21, we do 20. And so what I love about mindfulness and the reason I teach mindfulness is that it works much like a frequent flyer mile account where you can do five minutes when you wake up in the morning. Maybe that's the first thing you do when you wake up, sit up in bed and you do five minutes. Then you might have 10 minutes on the train. Whenever you're going to be on the train again, we'll see. <laughs> As you make your way to the bathroom, you can do another one. <laughs> and uh, by the end of the day, if you get up to 20 minutes, even if it's two minutes here and seven minutes there, etc., cetera, et cetera, it has been proven to be just as effective. You will reach the same kinds of results as if you did 20 minutes straight. I actually had a hard time believing that, just hearing about it, but that's why I read a lot of these research papers. So today we're gonna to, uh, try two of these. One is breathing and the other is a uh, body scan. And if anyone has any questions as I am talking, you, I'm very interruptible, except for when we meditate. So you can come on and interrupt me if you have questions at any time. And um, just so you know that I'm very, very interruptible. Let's try the first one together today. This is a breathing meditation from mindfulness-based stress reduction. As you noticed when you hear these different formal meditations is that it really targets automatic functions within us. And there's a reason why we are targeting the most mundane within us, the most quote unquote boring within us. Um, and yes, meditation can be boring, but stick with it. It's gonna be the best vacation you give yourself a couple of times per day eventually. So as we are breathing in mindfulness, we are not manipulating our breath. We're not doing any, anything fancy at all. We are simply observing what is. The same thing goes with everything we do in mindfulness. So what we're going to do now is that if it's safe for you, we're going to close our eyes and we're going to sit comfortably. Usually what we say in mindfulness is that we sit in a position where we can have something supporting our backs or not, but we don't support our head when we do sitting meditation. And there are reasons for all of this. And so as we get ready for this meditation and we have closed our eyes, we can put our hands on our laps. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to ring a little bell for you. This is not to be new agey and cool or anything. It's really because the sound of ringing bells has an impact on the nervous system that um, I want to give you. I am also going to use it when we get out of this meditation. So we'll start with uh, closing our eyes and doing a short mindfulness breathing meditation. Now, the first thing that usually happens when we get into a breathing meditation is that perhaps for the first time today, we are actually noticing that we have this entire system that is breathing for us. So the only thing we're doing right now is that we are closing our eyes and observing the breathing that is already going on within us. 
And we are going to start noticing things about our breathing, such as the air is a little cooler coming in through the nostrils and a little warmer going out. And we're just observing that we are completely present with our breathing. And we are noticing other things around and about our breathing. One thing of which might be that our bellies and rib cage are making way for air to come down our lungs. So there might be a sensation of the belly going in and out, tugging on the pants. We might also notice now that the breathing has, not by being manipulated, but it has naturally become a little slower, a little deeper. Thoughts come up and we let them just sail on by. It's the brain's job to produce thoughts. It doesn't mean that we need to pay attention to them. This is the genius of meditation. We decide. And right now, we specifically decide to put our attention on our breathing. So we come back to our breathing. And we let thoughts and images just, just sail on by and pay attention once again to our breathing. Every time our thoughts wander and we bring them back, we have made another bicep curl for our ability to pay attention where we want to pay attention. So we're going to take another few breaths together in silence. Sending enormous gratitude to this apparatus that does everything it's supposed to do without us butting in. We'll take another couple of breaths together. And when I ring the bells again, we can slowly open our eyes. Until then, we are enjoying our breathing. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment so that I can take a look at your beautiful faces and make sure that everybody's good everybody's good. Does anyone want to share anything, anything that popped up that feels like you want to talk about? How wonderful we are, right? It's quite, it's quite, it's quite extraordinary. All right, I'm gonna, um, warn you already now that we might do, um, we might be a tiny bit more than 30 minutes. Is that okay? Well, if not, we have a simple solution. You just sign off. How about that? Because it's important that we take it in a time that feels good for us. So everybody good? Everybody feeling? Okay, awesome. So let me share my screen again. Because this time, I would like to actually make it, um, make it known that 
mindfulness has been very, very researched. And if you look at online mindfulness-based stress reduction programs, um, one of the ones that, that I offer, what research has concluded is pretty staggering when it comes to how much it helps us. So you can see all the stats yourself, but if, if we just look at anxiety and depression and seeing that they actually help more than some medication without the side effect, well, unless we think that feeling balanced and happy and joyful is a side effect, then yes, it has side effects, but not like medication can have. And especially in your pr profession, this is something that's very noteworthy. And um, I think that um, one thing that I get feedback a lot actually on is how much better they sleep and how that is for those who go through these programs. And, and, and it's like just the how sleep and getting deep sleep and having your nervous system really rested through meditation just makes the whole, your whole life in another ball game, in another, on another level. And of course, 15% decreased inflammation has a huge impact in your blood's ability to fight intruders, which of course is more important than ever. Now there have been around 6,000 different um, studies, research studies around mindfulness. Some of them are online and others are uh, when we meet in groups. So I thought I would um, give you another um, set of um, results. And um, I think that um, the one that sticks out the most right now is that the risk to get the flu goes down 67%. Now, keep in mind, it does not say the risk to get the coronavirus goes down 67%. But what happens when we have the ability to help our own bodies to not react and go into to the adrenal system that deals with outer danger, that is actually what happens when we think that when we're, when we're scared, when we're stressed out, our adrenal system is on full throttle. Whereas what we need even more so when we're fighting internal threats such as bacterial infections or flus or viruses, is that, or when we're healing a bone or whatever, um, we need our immune system, the other system that's actually completely compromised when we are in fear mode. That's why this kind of practice gives such whopping results. So I wanted to just make sure that you all have that base and knowledge and trust that you're not wasting your time when you do this 20 minutes per day. Um, and I would love, love to also show you guys how we do a body scan for those of you who haven't tried and for the rest of us just because it's so delicious to be part of ourselves. And I have to admit that as much as my mind can be quite the rock because, you know, this is what I do, um, I'm noticing a difference in the way that I am more tense in my body. Like I actually feel more tension in my body these days. And of course, being a single mom during a coronavirus crisis, a global trauma and a global epidemic can do that to you. But in awareness, we feel it. And then we come up with very self-caring strategies for ourselves. And so I have updated my way of doing body scans, stretching, and some lighter yoga. So let's do a body scan together if, um, if you're up for it. Okay, cool. So um, we're gonna do the same thing now in body scan. And this time we're gonna make sure that we have our feet planted on the floor, if that is possible for you. If not, you know, keep them where they are my instructions are gonna be um, as if your feet are on the floor. And there is something very, very grounded about the floor attached to earth. It is a grounding experience to just actually pay attention to the 
energy that's coming up from, even if we're in a building, I mean, somewhere there's connection to ground, otherwise we would be flying. And um, so we'll do the same thing as we did last time, which is to, that we close our eyes. Our pretty little eyes get, get to rest for yet another moment. And um, I will not use the bells this time. I will simply instruct you to um, have this relaxed but alert position in your body, with your body. And we're going to first pay attention to our feet, to that meeting between our feet and the ground. And we can feel, if we tune in, that buzzing that comes from the ground. This is our safety and trust. We have ground under our feet. And we continue to feel our way with our focus, our, our non-judgmental present moment awareness of our bodies. We can go from feeling the soles of our feet to our heels, up through our lower legs to our knees. And as thoughts go, we come, we just let them go because we bring our attention back to our knees and our attention is then through our thighs and up to where our butts meet the chair or whatever it is that you're sitting on. There's a meeting space right there. There's energy right there that we can connect to. And we continue our journey up through our lower back, our rib cage, again, that's there so beautifully. And it's expand, expanding and contracting at the rhythm of your breathing. And so we pay attention to our bodies and we're going up our spine through our shoulder blades, through our necks and all the way up to the crown of our heads. And we're feeling the buzzing of our, our crown as we are making our way down through our forehead, through our cheeks, eyelids, lips, chins, ears. Sometimes we have a lot of tension in our ears. We're just paying attention. And from the sheer power of paying attention, we are relaxing and healing ourselves. So we continue our journey down through our shoulders, our upper arms. We can rest a little bit in our elbows, through our lower arms. And let's pay extra attention to that space between our hands and our thighs. Again, we're just observing what is. We are choosing to observe our own bodies instead of choosing the thoughts that are produced by our brains. 95% of which are completely useless anyway. Just repeats. So we're here training our awareness in the palms of our hands. And we're sitting here for a little bit because I really want you, as you're holding and touching your own body, to feel enormous gratitude towards this system, towards yourself and all that you do for you This is an extraordinary system that comes to your aid and all it wants is love and sleep and good nutritious food and movement 
intimacy and body-mind connection. That's all. So we send enormous gratitude and maybe you want to squeeze your thighs a little bit and say thank you very much and then you can open your eyes. And we should listen to the body now, right? What does it want to do? Mine want to stretch a little bit because we've been through our whole system. This beautiful, beautiful body of yours. Don't forget to send big thanks to your body. And um, what I wanted to touch upon before we part is that these tools of mindfulness-based stress reductions are yours for the taking anytime. Unless you drive your car, you know, there's always that, but there is something about mindfulness that makes us completely aware of life. And as such, you can do that at any time. Um, of course, quickies are really um, profound in a lot of ways. It can save a lot of relationships and especially the relationship with you when you can do a quickie meditation <laughs> where you, um, you can do these things for five minutes. You can do these things for one minute. And one of the sort of what I find the absolutely most effective way to get my nervous system really, really calm is more of a hypno hypnosis technique. And um, I'm just going to explain it now because we're running out of time. And it's one where we close our eyes and it's more of a visualization type exercise and you can bring this on with you um, as you as you go on your merry way. Um, it's called three, two, one. And what we do is that we breathe in and on the out breath, as we have our eyes closed, we are visualizing three different types of threes. So it might be a polka dot three, a handwritten three, a stripe three. And then we breathe in and then we visualize three different twos, the number two. And we do that and we do them one at a time and we really see the one we have created in our mind's eye before we move on to the next. And we do the same thing with one, we take the in-breath and on our exhale, we are visualizing three different number ones. And if that doesn't make sense, you can always email me because why this is so effective is that you are, now this is not mindfulness, this is a hypnosis, it's a manipulation of you going straight into creating exactly what you want in your mind's eye and for some reason is very, very effective. And then on top of that, you can then start maybe one, two, ten minutes of mindfulness if you feel that you really want to get down sooner. Gratitude is another tool that we can uh, take on the road. The gratitude, um, the best gratitude, the most effective for happiness and changing your life type gratitude um, um, thing that you can do. I'm searching for a word here. But anyway, this is an exercise that I called future gratitude. And it really has to do with you using neurology for you rather than against you. So as much as a lot of the, uh, I don't even know how to call them in, in the brain, but I mean, of course, they're not mistakes. It's just that we live so differently right now from how we used to live. So what is what the brain can't distinguish between is a real threat versus a perceived threat. That's why we're so stressed out all the time. By the same token, as much as that is used against us, we can use the same thing for us. And what you do then is that you are writing down and talking to your family about things that you are uh, grateful for in the future. But the real trick and how to actually 
trick the mind is that you speak of them as if they are already true. So an example is, I am so grateful that I am running around in Central Park and I see all the flowers and all these people. I feel the air in my lungs and I feel great. Thank you. You know, that's a gratitude that has to do with the future. Or if you want a pay raise. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, right? <laughs> so you, you put out this gratitude of future as if it has already happened. And last but not least, I want to show you something so beautiful from mindfulness. And those are the nine attitudes that come with mindfulness. And it's almost as if the birth father of mindfulness-based stress reduction, John Kabat-Zinn, knew that today would be here. Because if you look at what these attitudes are, I think you can all resonate with how absolutely important it is to assume all of these attitudes in how you are looking at the world right now, how you are looking at yourself right now. These are the attitudes, acceptance, non-judging, patience, trust, letting go, non-striving, beginner's mind, gratitude, and generosity. All of these resonate like ripple effects right now in where we are in this global trauma that we are experiencing together. All of them. So with that, I can send this little picture to all of you if you want them. Um, with that, I think that we are, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can email me. Just make sure that you said say WEDS or something to that effect so that I know that, that you're actually supposed to email me. And um, you can, whatever it is that you need to, um, if you have questions relating to what we've been talking about today, and of course, if you want to know more about mindfulness intelligence, you can just go to my site. And um, I was explaining to Carrie before everyone joined that um, Harley and I, we have a last name that's Björk. And um, Björk means birch tree in, uh, in Swedish. And so that's why my... Um, the logotype that I've been sharing with you is, um, is a tree. I absolutely love trees and I can't wait to um, be more part of trees as um, the world is um, finding its new footing.